Origami. The Japanese art of folding paper. Or, when translated from Japanese, it comes from ori, which means to fold, and gami, which comes from kami, which just means paper. Yeah, so to fold paper. <laughs> Most people know what origami is, but I bet you don't know the history of origami and how it's impacted the world in the past and continues to today. In this video, I'm going to unfold the history of origami. I'm going to talk about how it grew in popularity. I'm going to talk about how it's influenced the world and how it continues to influence the world today. And in addition to that, at the end of the video, I'm going to have a special treat for you guys. So make sure you stick around. Also, during this video, we're going to be playing a little game I like to call Who's that it's a when these pop up, try to guess what the origami is before I tell you. And in addition, uh, let me know in the comments how many you get right throughout the video. Uh, I'm going to include like five or so in the video, so uh, definitely uh, make sure you stick around for that. Just tuck yourself in and let's unfold some Japanese origami history. As it turns out, it's pretty much impossible to write out a comprehensive history of the art of folding paper. And that's because almost no information exists in written or drawn form prior to the 15th century. But that's nothing to get bent out of shape about. Because we know that paper was created as early as 105 AD, created by the Chinese court official Kai Lun. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But we know people prior to that date were using other materials for writing like papyrus, leather, and cloth. And there's an extremely high probability that different folding techniques were learned and practiced with these materials prior to the creation of paper. However, as far as folding paper goes, it likely wasn't too common until after the Japanese adopted and improved the quality of paper making. This new special paper they created was called washi. Washi was not only functional, but it could also be folded without breaking. It was created sometime between 610 AD and 800 AD. And I know that's kind of a large gap, but believe it or not, it is surprisingly difficult to find some of this information. Calm down, Tim. Honestly, it's nothing to get bent out of shape about. It is just paper after all, but I guess it doesn't really matter too much because... There's actually no hard evidence of origami prior to the 1600s other than a single hand-drawn picture. And the first written evidence we get is actually from 1680 AD in a poem by Ihara Saikaku, where he wrote about origami butterflies. And like I mentioned before, there was a small picture of a paper boat that was in an edition of the Tractores de Sfera Mundi by Johannes de Sacrobosco. I hope I'm not butchering that. Uh, and that was in 1490. But honestly, that's not written, it's drawn. And when it comes to paper folding, I really do believe that the art of origami started back in Japan uh, when washi was created. But having said that, I could be wrong. Pressing on. One of the earliest known origami instruction books, Senbazuru Orikata, was made in 1797 by Akisato Rito. Also, this video is pay-per-view, so make sure you make your payment by clicking that like button or subscribing down below. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I prefer to take the easier route, or the much more simple route, because it's a lot less paperwork. <sighs> Moving on. Friedrich Froebel, the inventor of kindergarten, yeah, that guy, saw origami as having educational benefits, and with his journals, he helped spread origami around the world. Froebel is actually associated with three basic types of folds. The folds of life, which were basic folds that introduce kids to paper folding. The folds of truth, teaching basic principles of geometry. And the folds of beauty, which were more advanced folds based on squares, hexagons, and octagons. These folds were brought to Japan around 1880, and around this time, the word origami was just starting to be used for the recreational folding. Once it grew in popularity in Japan, a number of different people continued to help spread it and grow it throughout the world, like some of these guys. And after World War II, it began to grow in popularity over in the United States. And after that, a number of really interesting things happened. 
1955, an origami pioneer, Gershon Legman, arranged an exhibition in Amsterdam of the origami art of the Japanese master Akira Yoshizawa, who was a very popular origami maker at the time. And in the 1950s, a woman named Lillian Oppenheimer helped popularize the word origami and introduced it to Americans. She even founded the Origami Center of America in 1958 in New York. And alongside this, she wrote several books and even made a television program teaching people about origami. And all of this just helped increase the popularity of origami in the world. Pressing on. Since 1958, the art of origami has grown significantly, both in complexity and in scope. It's not only been used for a recreational activity. It's not only been used as a form of art. It's not only been used as an educational tool. It's also been used in so many other ways, such as creating new designs for products, like satellites that we put into space, or self-assembling robots. It's not only been used for creating new designs, it's also been used for improving old designs, like what we have uh, for our airbags in our cars. It's been used to improve architecture and buildings. And it's even being used in the medical field for small things we put into our body, like heart stents. The art of origami has continued to unfold countless opportunities and different inventions in many different fields, from science to art to our daily lives. By now, I hope you're impressed with everything that origami has accomplished. And if you want to try out some origami for yourself, we have an origami playlist that we just made where we'll teach you how to make some special origami. And in addition to that, um, in this video, I've been saying origami and I've been saying origami uh, because we want to follow the Japanese pronunciation. Then you want to say ori. Origami, okay? So I wanted to make sure I checked up with that. And in addition, um, in the link, or the description below, as well as in uh, maybe the comments, we are going to have links to different origami paper if you wanted to buy some stuff that we found interesting for origami paper. And also in the comments, please let me know what your favorite origami is. And if there's any origami that you want us to make a video for so that we can teach you how to do that. Uh, also, one last question, last question. How's my mustache? Does it look okay? Yeah, I decided to go for a curl, and uh, I I want to grow it out, but I want to hear your opinions. I do read every single comment, so uh, let me know what you think of the mustache in the comments, too. Having said that, thank you guys for watching this video, and Dice Quirk, out.